in the impact of global warming and whatnot, it, it's, it's an easier task than if you wanted to calculate that footprint if you were uh, you know, a city with very blurry boundaries uh, uh, defining it. Secondly, I know very little, very few communities in BC that have developed such an amount of knowledge uh, in the past few years. You have engaged tons of consultants and reporting, and we figured that there, there had to be a way of connecting the dots and make sense out of them so you can use them in, in a meaningful way. And that this was the opportunity for doing that. Say, how do we can use that information, that data that is shelved somewhere, and, and provide support for a planning exercise? So the two main reports we looked at was one, the, the most recent one from the Bimina Institute, who provided a, a very accurate inventory of greenhouse gas emissions on the island <coughs> as a total. And secondly, the population forecasting developed a few years ago and also hired by the, uh, uh, the municipality. So that population forecast gave us the numbers, uh, basically three uh, milestones, one in 2000, 2006, and then 2010. And the Pimbina Institute gave us the total emissions uh, today, as of 2006, actually, and, uh, and what the targets were as agreed upon the community. Uh, many years ago, you want it to be at 23,000 tons total for the island or equivalent to 2,000 levels. So what we did was uh, we calculated, we had the actual population number and we came up with a per capita based on the total emissions. It's very simple, very straightforward. From that on, that was the scientific data that we had. From then on, it was all about guesstimates, not so much intending uh, in pinpointing the actual number in terms of setting up the path forward and understanding the big picture issues. <coughs> the main conclusion from the Pembina Institute is that 70% of your emissions are transportation related. So that means that unless you address that massive issue, uh, you're not going to cut it off. Uh, buildings won't make it by themselves and, uh, and because the master planning exercises mostly uh, for civic area and <coughs> buildings we figured that if we didn't mention or address this big picture issues, we were not going to have the arguments for an island-wide strategy. So in, in, in sum, the exercise was to say, we know the average per person, which is in this case, it's seven tons, could be something in that range. And you can easily infer a big difference or a big gap between emissions from a villager and a non-villager. And so from then on, it was more about doing guesstimates and, and trying to find out what the trends were if you have that growing population as per the, the population forecast report and what would happen to your total emissions, which is actually the only number that matters. Efficiency by itself uh, at some point may only provide uh, encouragement for more development. You could have more efficient buildings, but if you're going to be building, building efficient buildings, at some point you're not going to be capping your emissions. So we said if we wanted to go back to 2,000 levels, what would have to happen on the island, both in the village and elsewhere, as an island-wide uh, strategy for actually getting to those targets? So we said, we have seven tons, we infer a difference between the villager and the non-villager, and what would happen with that population? This last slide, as of 2010, tells me that if we implemented transport island-wide transportation strategies, along with green buildings and lower emissions and whatnot, we may be able to have a villager, given the numbers we are implementing the master plan, around 2,000 plus another measures and a transportation plan, we maybe get villagers at 1.9 tons per capita. And that's possible. Yes? Sorry. Can you define villager and non-villager, please? It's basically based on the, on the boundary we Alan referred before. We're just making a very, very broad stroke saying this is a village and then else, everybody else live off the village boundary. But it's not, it doesn't intend to be a scientific boundary. And that's pretty much what it tends to do, is saying, unless we do something island-wide, uh, we're going to have to focus only on the village. And even if we have 2,000 people, higher densities and better buildings, we would have to actually have carbon positive or carbon sequestering villages, which is very unrealistic. So it's, it's about sending the message that this is a, an overall task that should be undertaken by the entire island. I guess. Yeah. So I, I'm not sure if you got one of the key points of that, but the, that's the that's mentioning of the, of the 2,000 people number. Uh, you know, we had to end up with some real targets for Snub Cove. 
and they had to be based on something very real, which was greenhouse gases. I, I'm going to stress again that starting from sustainable initiatives is paramount to what we're doing. And if we're not serious about that today, then, then a lot of what we're talking about isn't really worthwhile talking about. So this is very deeply founded in that principle. Uh, so the, the basis is that if we can add density, add people, add jobs to the cove, we can really address greenhouse gas emissions. And in addition to that, we may be able to preserve much of the rest of the island. I mean, you know, one of the things I remember hearing when I first got here was the, the standard Bowen uh, script when you move here is that that's it, okay, we've got to pull up the drawbridge now, I'm here, right? And, you know, in some ways I share that, but when you, when you break that down, for me at least, it's, I don't want to change the nature of this place. And if we can preserve the rest of the island and make a great community in the village, can be sustainable. I think we've really got something, and that's what this is about. I'm going to take your question at the end, if you don't mind, because we're going to try and get through this in one go. So if you can hold it, I'd appreciate that. So we're going to run through now a series of goals that we developed from all of this, and we'll be working our way into the plan from, from that. I'm going to bring Mark up here, because for those of you who don't know, and most of you probably do know, Mark is considered uh, probably the expert on, on sustainable planning and development in Vancouver, and has exported those ideas throughout the world, I think, is certainly North America. I had to explain I don't wear saffron robes. To <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're very appreciative of having him so involved on Bowen on an ongoing basis and certainly on our team. So all of this was done in conjunction with Mark's firm and Essendon's firm in dealing with this. So goal number one is, is fairly obvious and I've stated that before, but it is one of the essential ingredients of reducing greenhouse gases and it, coincidentally it's also one of the great ingredients of making a great place in planning there, so do you want the, to add something? We've, it's been interesting to have grappled with this question. Bowen is actually not unlike quite a few neighborhoods that have a density that's, um, that's lower than an urban density and a, a deep desire to retain the character of its neighborhood and a place of why you live here, and at the same time recognizing that there's this density factor, this mixed use factor that has to come in. And how those two go together is becoming one of the most challenging topics right now. And our firm has recently done some analysis for EMAR, the world's largest development company that's now moved into Vancouver, and they're trying to start to densify Point Grey and Dunbar areas. And we did some, again, a neighborhood which keeping its character is non-negotiable. And by doing a number of, uh, about a month of analysis on growth projections and absorption rates and averages across the lower mainland, the same pattern that Alan has brought forward to express the kind of goals that have come forward in your sustainability strategy and others, says that we, we do need to put some significant attention in terms of where the density goes and adding some of that to provide a whole lot of the other things you need. But by doing that, you get to keep the character of your island, which is why you're here. And you can live in the village if you want, but you don't have to, and or at certain stages in your life. So what you see here is a story of trying to find those higher density mixed use objectives, how to meet them in a way that does not compromise why you live here. The other thing interesting you'll see as the pattern unfolds is that the way that the buildings and things have been laid out actually get allow you to keep the character of Bowen right in the heart of the village. So we aren't actually creating a place from somewhere else. It's actually right there. So one of the key ingredients of this is to actually put a boundary around what is the code. This is, this is very important because otherwise you end up with sort of breaking of the rules, if you will, and you end up with sprawl all over again. There has to be a boundary to what you're doing and one that's reasonable based on the lay of the land and the goals you're trying to achieve in terms of densities. So, this is, go ahead. yeah, I mean, what, one of the first things that, that uh, we arrived at, and I showed you that diagram before with the circles about trying to identify sites, was that, you know, I think a lot of planners would come to this place and say, well, okay, there's the cove and there's a circle and there's kind of an outer circle around there and we're done, right? Well, this is an important concept that the road system on Bowen, I'm a pointer again, <coughs> the road system on Bowen, as we all know, kind of comes up from the ferry and then filters out in, in fingers and leads you across the island. This is actually the opportunity for development. These are the arterial roads that in other jurisdictions they're trying to make uh, more dense and, and with more and higher buildings and more uh, activity. So that's the opportunity we saw in Bowen and, and we decided to, the, the great benefit from that was that the opposite pieces, these over here, 
are kind of like a mesh of green fingers.